Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, today is Monday and this is a new week. God has said that in this month of April, he is visiting you. Praise God. So listen, expect the visitation of God in your life. Now, let me tell you something about God's visitation. When God is visiting, listen, things will definitely change. So, hey, when things now look like it's getting overwhelming suddenly over your life, that's an indication that God is about to show up because he's coming to show and change everything. So everything around you will begin to react. Praise God. Yeah, that's a sign. So when you see things becoming a bit overwhelming, don't give up. It's not a time to give up. Rather, it's a time to smile and say, oh, I, I can see God is surely coming. Praise God. Now, I have a lot to share with you this week. But before we go on today, can we call for that daily bread that the Lord has commanded us? Are you ready? With a heart of expectation, join me right now as we declare. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hey, I encourage you that when we make this demand, don't just watch. This is not time to watch. This is time to partner. This is time to join in, to say and to make the demand with your own mouth. Praise God. Yeah. Don't just say we're praying. Amen. No, no, no. I demand, repeat the same thing. And don't just repeat it. Repeat it with faith in your heart and expect a miracle to happen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, thank you, Holy Spirit. The anointing of God's Spirit is present here. And He's present where you are. The reason He's present is to meet your needs, to touch you. So as we go on on this broadcast, expect something to happen. Yes, expect something to happen because He is here. Praise God. Now turn your Bibles with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. And we're, we're going to start reading from verse 14. Follow this now. He says, He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. I love this. Now, when we read things like this, sometimes, you know, people just read it. But then you don't think of what you're reading. What does it mean? His judgments are in all the earth. <laughs> it, it, it means there is no part of the earth that God's judgment is not executed. <laughs> yeah, no part of this earth. Now, do you know the reason? The reason is because the enforcers, enforcers of the judgment, they are everywhere praise god there are angels everywhere in every nook and cranny of the earth there are angels there and why are there angels everywhere to enforce god's judgment so when the bible when david said his judgment are in all the earth he knows what he's talking about praise god so it doesn't matter where you are that's why when the bible says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He said, whosoever, it doesn't matter where you are, wherever on the face of this earth you are. Jesus said, if two of you shall agree on earth, he didn't tell you, he didn't say if two of you shall agree in Israel. He said, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. Did he say anything? Oh yes, he said, anything praise god now what does that tell when you read things like that what does it tell you david said his judgments are in all the earths oh when i pray does god hear me yes he does he does and there are angels ready to execute just like we ask for daily bread now do you know angels heard you and what's their job? Their job is to execute that they are enforcers. 
Thank you, Lord. Now watch this. We, we just read verse 40. I'll take verse 40 again. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Then verse 15, he says, Be ye mindful. I'm reading from the old King James now. Be ye mindful always of his covenants. Be ye mindful always, not just today, yesterday, always. Be mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Even of the covenant, covenant which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same to Jacob for a law. He says, be mindful always of his covenant. I shared with you last week, God cut two covenants with Abraham. The covenant of tithing and the covenant of circumcision. Now, you, you know about tithing, but you, don't, you, you have never realized that it's a covenant. And that covenant still exists till this day. Now, now people go and say, oh... Um, we don't have to tithe again. I have told you this before. Anyone who's telling you not to tithe today is speaking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. I'll say it again. Anyone who's telling you not to tithe today is speaking by the spirit of the Antichrist. I didn't say he's the Antichrist. I say he's speaking by the spirit of the Antichrist. Meaning the Antichrist has been able to uh, the spirit of the Antichrist has been able to infiltrate the person's thoughts. Yep. Because, you see, Titan is a covenant that God made with Abraham. And that was a covenant of sustenance. I told you that last week. It's a covenant of sustenance. So we see Titan up to the third, third generation. We see Jacob telling God, look, you know, when God visited Jacob and Jacob realized, hey, God has visited me. What was his response? He said, if you will be with me indeed, like you have said, and bring me back, like you have said, I make a vow. Everything you give me, I will give a tent to you. Now, where did he get that from? He was, he has been taught by his fathers. He was trained. He was taught. So he made that vow to the Lord. What was he doing? He was coming right into the covenant that his grandfather had with God. Remember, God said it is for in every generation. So he knew what he was talking about. And I've told you before, Everything you see go from the first, second, and third generation. Now, it tells you that that thing is an everlasting thing. That thing is going to continue forever. Anything that continues to the third generation, unbroken, is going to last forever. So today, even as Christ, because we are Abraham's seed, because of because of Christ, if any man, if if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. seed. Galatians three twenty nine. Now we are Abraham's seed, and it says we are heirs according to the promise. Now, how do we show today that we are Abraham's seed? It's not by mouth. It's not by I am the seed of Abraham. That's not it. Praise God. Anybody can sing any song, but hey. We take certain actions. We do certain things. And I, you, know, you know, when it comes to Titan, I always say that, like, I, I don't get it. There is no way, because that's been my experience. So I would, I would wonder, there is no one who has walked with God truly. I'm not talking about those who do business and they make money and then they, there is no pastor. Who truly depends on God for finances that God will not deal with where Titan is concerned? I have not seen one. No, I haven't seen. Now, you, you realize that people who preach that 
you are not supposed to tithe. They are the same people that will tell you, you need to go sort it out there. You need to go make money by yourself. God does not bless financially. They will tell you things like that. Now, that's where you see that their confusion begins to come in. Jesus said concerning such people, you err because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God. See that now? Now, those of us who depend on the Lord for everything. Now, when I say everything, I mean everything. <laughs> God. Now, you will begin to understand the teachings of the Lord because the Lord will teach you. If you depend on him for everything, then it means you have to follow him step by step. So he will teach you. And then he will teach you concerning tithing. He will teach you. So, so I don't tithe, for example, because, of course, I grew up learning how to tithe, yeah? But then I've come to that place with God where I realized I mean, I wasn't even taught half of the truth concerning it. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. And that's what I'm sharing with you. This is a covenant. And David speaking here he says, be mindful always of his covenants. What does it mean be mindful always of his covenant? Now, he told you what, to, what covenant he's talking about. He, he's telling you about the covenant which God made with Abraham. Those two covenants, covenant of sustenance, which is the covenant of, covenant of tithing. Now, you see, as long as you trust God to sustain you, now, which is what God has ordained. It's not, you know, some people just think, at, I know at a certain point you'll be trusting God, but you grow to that point where you have to maintain yourself. There is no such time of maintaining yourself. You will trust God from day one. You will trust God till eternity. Yes, you know, that's the problem and challenges a lot of believers have. They believe God, they trust God, and they, they are waiting for God to give them one big open door, and God gives them that open door. They feel they have gone out of that faith level now, you know? Now they are in the making money level. So now they begin to look for investments. They begin to. Now, even if God raises you up to the place of having investment and things like that, I'm telling you the truth. It must still be by faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. You can never please. Let me tell you this truth. And God will deal with you where this is concerned. The moment God sees that your attention is being shifted from him, I will tell you what he will do. He will bring everything down. He will. Why? Because he doesn't want it, you to get to that place where you no longer please him. So you must watch it. And that's why the, the thing that brings us together with him is this covenant of sustenance. The fact that you have money to buy whatever you need to buy, you must discipline yourself to always go before the Lord before you make that purchase. It's a discipline. And, and let me tell you the truth. When you grow in faith, those are the disciplines you learn till you get to the place of abundance. Now, if you don't learn those disciplines, when you get to the place of abundance, it will be easy for Satan to step in. And that's what God is half. God doesn't want the devil to step in. You know what? He, he loves to steal the glory. So all the teachings of faith, all the teachings of trust in the Lord, it is to get, that's what God did to him. That's why God will tell Abraham, don't take even a shoelace from all those stuff. Not because it's a sin for him to, they were his, but God was teaching him complete trust and dependence on him. So you made money and God is telling you, I don't want to touch a dime from that money. But Lord, no don't. Well, Lord, this is my business. I, 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 I worked for the money. Yes, but I'm the one to sustain you. There are men God have raised up. They make money, but they never touch their money. There are men like that. Not because they are saving, you know, by the command of the Lord. God, there are men God have taught how to come put their, their, their finances in compartments. 
And God said, this is the only part you are allowed to touch. What do you think God is doing? Think God is a killjoy? No, he's teaching them dependence. You must depend on the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're a billionaire in dollars. You mustn't get to that place where you, you start running after money. Hey, hey, if God loves you, just like Job, he will tear everything down. Not because he's angry with it, but let me tell you this truth, there is always a new level. I'm telling you, there is always a new level. You see that statement? We came in naked into this world. You see that statement? Very true. So you never claim ownership to anything. Never. Never. It all belongs to him. And as he commands, so we do. Now that's why God told them in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 8, he says, You shall remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you the power to get wealth. Notice. Now, there are people who modify that statement, so who gave you the power to create wealth. That's not what he said. He said you, he is the one who gives you the power to get wealth. Get wealth. Get wealth. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Get the wealth. There's a difference between getting wealth and creating it. and i know we want to be creative i know we want to we want that that thing in our heart like this i i i i did this thing but listen to me before you were even born into this world god has fixed everything the bible said jesus the bible said the works were finished from the foundation of the world hey there is nothing you have to add here you are only being a vessel through whom God will bring and manifest certain things. If you refuse to be that vessel, God will pick someone else to do. So, hey, there is nothing you are adding. So the best you can do for heaven is to align yourself with God's mind and his thoughts. Now, that's the way you will become a vessel. But then when you become a vessel and God brings great things in this world through you, it doesn't mean you sit back and say, oh, look at what I have done. Uh-huh. Read your Bible. The last man that did that, what did God say? You remember Nebuchadnezzar. God said, ah, cut him down, cut him down. Why? What did he do wrong? He looked at the whole kingdom and said, wow, see the kingdom we have built. See what my hands have done. God says, cut him down, cut him down. Then you remember the other man who said, oh man, I have got so great a harvest. What do I do now? I know what to do. I'll tear down this band, then I'll lift up, then I'll relax and say, ha, ah, now I've worked so hard. It's time to enjoy. God says, fool, tonight I'm calling you back. Why? Because it's not you. It's the wisdom of God that has been established already already before you were born please let this sink in your mind because my time is up I, I pray that you will indeed be mindful of his covenant and begin to live and, and and execute the plan and purpose of god for your life in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ Go and receive the blessings of the covenant in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.